Okay, okay. It happens to be Saturday, March. Saturn's day. Saturn, named after the planet Saturn. The, the, oh, the, the god. The god Saturn, who is like uh, Hades, right? He was like the uh, the god of the underworld, Ooh. I think. Yes, yeah, Saturn day afternoon. It's not in the park. Eight the Fourth of July, like the song by Chicago. Remember that Saturday in the park. Every day's the Fourth of July. No, it happens to be snowing, but it's not sticking. It's melting. The parade is almost over, or is over. Parade. Say party, stay parade. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's already today. Who because was, it will conflict with the marathon tomorrow. Whose idea? So, so mayor of uh, New York, the Blumberg, little, the yeah. Bl Blumberg, the little midget, the little, the, the little, little Pucian, the little general, the little general has decided to have the St. Patrick's Day parade on the 16th instead of the 17th, like he's supposed to. Yeah. What the hell's wrong with him? Marathon. Screw the marathon. Can't can't you have both? No, because you gotta, uh, I don't know about the streets that they're all on, but obviously they conflict uh, in some way. Well, the parades, I think, are are on Fifth Avenue. So where's the uh, marathon? I have no idea. Maybe it uses Fifth Avenue too, I don't know. Uh, it's possible, but anyway, regardless, this is when our show is being recorded here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. and. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. I am your host, <coughs> James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. And uh, yes, it is uh, early afternoon, March 16th, uh, 2013. And this is the conclusion of St. Patrick's Day week. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all your, you Irish Americans as well as Irish throughout the world. And uh, I will be gorging myself with friends. Um, quite possibly a uh, world heavyweight champion and one of the stars of, of the movie The Wrestler. Golden Globe Award winning with uh, Mickey Rourke and Marissa Tomei. The reinforcer Andrew Anderson might be joining me, but I will be gorging myself with succulent, tender corned beef brisket and cabbage free, all you can eat all day and night uh, at Pub 46 in on Route 46 uh, East in Clifton. So at that time you will be known as James O. Madonna. Something like that. I will be st stuffing myself quite a bit. They will lose money on me. All you have to do is buy a, a beverage, a drink, and you can partake in the all you can eat corned beef and cabbage. And a little celebration for establishments like Pub 46, one of the, the finest sports bars in the state of New Jersey, if not the finest. What about that one over there on Route 17? They ain't giving the me... Steak place. They ain't giving me no free oh. corned beef and cabbage, brother. Because if I remember correctly, when I was there, they, they had huge big greens. <laughs> You know, for the for the Super Bowl, everything like that. Speaking of Super Bowl, you know what some of these restaurants do, so they don't have to uh, have the dishwasher wash bowls. They have these bread bowls where you 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 they end up giving you less soup because it, it holds less liquid than a regular bowl. So they put the oh, soup the bread. You mean to take they, the stuff? The carved out? the yeah. carved out bread in the shape of a bowl. They put the soup in the bread, you get less soup, and guess what? The dishwasher doesn't have to wash the bowls. The bowls. Typical capitalism in, in, in the food industry and in the restaurant business in the United States. Isn't that just typical that companies in well, the... Well then they don't have to pay Jose too much, that's why. The companies in the United States come up with these schemes, these ideas. It's amazing how, they, how it just you know, the, the mines are working round the clock to cut corners and increase their profits and screw the American worker. Mm -hmm. This is me, uh, Lucky Blackthorn and Weapons Grade Shillelagh from Ireland, 
and uh, there's the shamrock, the shamrock of authenticity, or is tidity. it tidity? Or if your if your if your mind is in the gutter, I guess Mine it, is. it would be tidity. You and Danny Mount, man, man, the older you get, the more uh, well, more perverted. What about me? <laughs> I should talk. I know uh, reinforcer Andrew Anderson has, has a very lively imagination, also. Ooh. Anyway, before we begin, before we sink our our teeth, our teeth into the teeth, into the teeth. I mean, sink our our teeth into these readings, and God only knows we have plenty of them that got built up because I was sick for a week. <clears throat> Let me formally pipe aboard our progressive liberal pirate ship my illustrious co-host mm. and mentor, and in rebuttal of the new pope that was mm. elected, the pope of the internet himself, oh, my co-host and mentor. <clears throat> you know, some people, uh, David Letterman made a joke and, and he read the, you know, the entire Ten list? The entire no. You well, besides that, the entire name of the new pope from Argentina. Oh, good God. And he said, and he says, oh, by the way, I use his spaghetti sauce. It sounds like a spaghetti sauce company. It's like a elongated Italian sounding name. And what do they call him, Francis for short? What about Prince? Prince. That's not long in English. Whatever. He's Prince, Prince Spaghetti. We're about, New Tony. We're about Hunts. Hunts Tomatoes. Uh, burr, burr, what's Aunt the, Millie? What's the burr, burr, burr one? That stupid company you like, Aunt Millie's? I'm talking about spaghetti itself. Oh. The pasta. The only... Barilla. The only jarred sauce that I would say is very close to restaurant quality spaghetti sauce Aunt is Aunt a Millie. company called... Victoria. You, you can't, Never heard of it. You can't miss it. It has a gondola. It has a picture of Venice in the front. And it there's no corn syrup hey, or good. no sugar. Like ragu. No modified food starch. No modified food starch. No corn syrup. Uh, uh, no uh, sugar. Good. It's, it's, it's all ingredients. Just tomatoes. Basic ingredients that you could pronounce and recognize. Yeah. It's, it, and it's it better be restaurant quality. It's like five dollars a jar. Mm -hmm. But trust me. Whatever happened? Did you it's ever good. Have, did you ever have uh, Sinatra's? Sure, I, I read Paul it. Newman? No, I didn't buy it because it has sugar in it. Oh my God! Same thing with Francisco Rinaldi. Sugar, sugar, oh, Rinaldi, sugar, please. sugar. Everything sugar. Yeah. You know, and um, um, as far as the whole wheat pasta, I I only get the ones that come in sixteen ounces. I don't get this new fangled uh, 13 yeah. ounces 12 ounce box because for 16 ounces I could squeeze two dinners I could squeeze four well I, uh, four. you're you're smaller than me yeah. all right let me pipe you aboard the ship is rocking Oh my god. Sounds a little warbly. Oh my god. What's going on with me bosun's whistle? Oh my god. That was an elaborate piping, a deluxe piping because of St. Patrick's Day weekend. And, Shot him and all the succulent corn, uh, corned beef brisket that I will be inhaling. Stopping up? Yes, inhaling. Well, I will be. Don't worry, I'll chew it well. To, to make Gary oh, no yeah. happy, oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, you know, you know. He, yeah, but it'll he, get cold by the time you chew it thirty times each time. Thirty times. Oh yeah, thirty. What times. if they run out of corned beef? I can't chew it well, that many times. Well, that's what I'm saying. You can't chew it too much. <clears throat> I can't chew it that many times. Yeah. I'll save that for later. All right. Let's sink our teeth. Yeah. Yeah. I just. Oh my Af. Me, me African drum. Sounds wonderful. My, my new African drum, the uh, Djembe drum. I've been practicing. Did you make a video? 
Not yet, but I'm pretty good now. But I want to make sure I, uh, I'm supposed to jam with uh, Dan E. Mount. He's going to be playing his flamenco music on his on his acoustical guitar. Guitar, guitar. Yeah, and I, and I will be playing the, the African drum. Uh, it'll be nicer because he's very good at playing flamenco. You know, very beautiful uh, uh, instrumental music. Dan E. Segovia Mount. Segovia Mount. Was that fa the famous guitarist? Segovia. S S S B Esteban S Esteban. Segovia or? is the one of the biggest. But uh, you mean the guy on television? There's there's a famous flamenco guitarist. Yeah, he wears the black outfit. The black leather and a hat. Hat like Zorro hat. Like Zorro hat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the guy. I Esteban. like that hat. I think it's Esteban. That's a nice hat. I love that hat. And I also saw one of my hats that I also need. But his is leather, today, like mine. Like in I mine. the parade, yeah. my top hat. The Grand Marshal was wearing my top hat at the parade. Short and begone. Well, if you had a top hat. I was going to get you a top hat, but I didn't like the material. I need a top hat. I need a bowler. Now, if you had a top hat, did, didn't didn't uh, Chief uh, 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 Chief of the Hakawis? No, that was a derby with a crazy horse. With the flower in it. I mean, it had a feather in it. Yeah, a feather in it. Was that a derby? I think it was a derby. Yeah. Okay. It was he, he had a feather in the derby. I'm not focusing on the. Uh, but uh, a top chromium. hat. Uh, uh, would you take uh, ample photographs uh, if you had the top hat on? Why sure? Right. Why not? I have a lot of photographs with hats on my dead computer. Yeah, uh, uh, Billy Bones is having a PC. Dr. O. Billy. Dr. O. Billy is having PC problems, corrupt yeah. files or some, something like that. I can't boot because of some kind of missing or corrupt file. Okay? All right. I need to get the XP yeah. Pro setup. CD, which I don't know where it is, because it's it's around somewhere. Yeah, but I got to find it. What kind of boot do you need? Is it Justin, Tony Lama, Dan Post? I can't wear boots anymore. Oh. <laughs> I used to wear Beetle boots too. Beetle juice. Beetle boots, along with my regular cowboy boots. Yeah, you had a Beatles haircut back in the day, too. I had a Beatles haircut, too. I had a Nehru jacket. <laughs> yes, sir, buddy. And I had the uh, Beatles boots. You want a carnivorous a domino beetle as a pet from the uh, Sahara No. Well, look at the bright side. You can I, call George Harrison, Ringo, you can name them. I saw, I caught a program today while I was dressing and doing my ablutions in the morning. What? And it was concerning El Nino over there in uh, California. Right. And how it was destroying, like, the weather out, uh, out in the ocean. Yeah. And the seals and pups and everything. The, there's this, uh, there's this, I think it's called domoic acid or something, where the algae produce it, the fish eat it, the, the uh, seals eat it, and then they get, and they get uh, seizures. And they, so and El Nino has thrown the fish otherwise, so they can't eat. They're starving to death, and they're coming on shore. And the animal, the food control chain. over there, the food chain is disrupted. Yeah, but there ain't no food, but the animal controller, they're picking up all these people, so, these pups and everything. So off because the because of abnormal weather, ocean temperatures, there has been an uh, an unfavorable algae bloom. Right. Which is similar to the and it's red this domoic acid or something. Remember the red tide, yeah. the toxic red tide. There is this algae bloom that is producing this toxin. That and the is, fish are eating it, and then the seals eat the fish, and, and and they get it. And they're all sick. And they're sick, and they're starving because the fish are gone, because of El Nino. And El Nino is most likely caused. What do you think? Climate change. Well, something heats up the water. Hey man, something's killing off all the bees, <laughs> you know. And oh, by the way, uh, the the beautiful 
and I've always um, admired them. The beautiful monarch butterfly mm -hmm. is uh, their population is down like 50, 58 percent or almost 60 percent. The, um, the they migrate to Mexico to breed. Yeah. So aren't they in Mexico now? There, but there's fi there's like over fifty percent less of them. There, in other words, they're pop over there or over here. No, we're overall. Well, how do they know that? The 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 monarchs are uh, the population is depleting every year, and they feel it's because of pesticides. And when you think of pesticides, everything is from pesticides. And when you think of the bees dying and the monarch butterflies dying and pesticides, you think of one name. Monsanto? The, de the demon Monsanto? Du du and that Mon other one? What's the other one? The other chemical company? Yeah. But the point is, we've been fighting Thank this battle since uh, Rachel Carson. Thank you, Republicans. Okay? We've been fighting this battle since Rachel Carson. And what about that? What has been done? What about that, that big mouth, conservative witch, bitch, whatever you want to call her, the harpy uh, Ann Coulter? Had something to say about uh, that that no no liberal female should ever hold public office. The big mouth and the cunt. Hold on. No, please don't even gra grace her with that. She has a cunt. And please. the cunt cunter. Anti cunt. It, it, it doesn't want any a f a liberal female to hold public office. So she's she's she wants to be a dictator, pretty much. All the, the Fox News people, they want to be well, fascist okay. dictators. Conservative Republicans want to control. They want to control as if they were ruling. Yeah, well, well, like in the feudal days. Well, Dan told me Ann Coulter and and others on Fox News are are paid off Republican. They're paid off shills. instigators. They're shills to get under the skin of Democrats and liberals. Yeah, they're shills. They're 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 instigators. That's Dan. That's uh, Roger Ailes' uh, agenda. That's what he bought Fox for, and uh, you know that's what he does. Rupert Murdoch sold it. He puts out lies. Rupert Murdoch sold Fox. Roger Ailes controls it. Whether he owns it all, I have no okay. idea. All right. But he is in control. But the point is, that's what it's there for. It's supposed to be the opposite of the truth. Now, now the information, uh, the the big scan, the big Republican scandal in the state of Florida, did that pop up in a newspaper at all this week? Which scandal? Um, a whole bunch of people connected with the Republican uh, governor of Florida were caught red-handed doing something very dastardly. Well, they were trying to do something during the uh, election. No, no, this is recent stuff. Uh, what's his name? His last name is Scott. Uh, Rick Scott. Rick Scott. The governor. Yeah, these people are connected with Rick Scott's administration. Mm. A whole bunch of Republicans were caught doing something very underhanded. Mm. I have no idea of it. Yeah. But I don't doubt it. And I am really surprised it didn't pop up in our, in our local newspaper this week. Uh -huh. It sure was on Yahoo News. In all its glory, I, I sent you the link. Oh, really? Oh, I, I haven't been on the computer <laughs> since Wednesday. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> he hasn't been able to see it. Jeez. Yeah, I, I'm really, I'm really surprised. The uh, local newspaper, uh, the Bergen Record. Shame on you for not, for not making this front page. What's the matter? You, you, you don't want to say anything against Republicans? Huh. U.S. media. There you go. Well, a lot of a lot of the papers they pick and choose what stories they're going to run. Mm. You know. Yeah, conveniently. All right. I'm sure you'll never hear anything out of that on Fox. Hell no. <laughs> no, Fox wouldn't tell you. No way. MSNBC will tell maybe. you. Maybe. 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 But 
MSNBC right now with the Ed Show has been running Mr. Prouty, the guy who recorded uh, Mitt Romney's 47 minutes. I mean, 47 uh, percent. Uh, I think thingy. I think the Democratic Party and Barack Obama should thank Pr Mr. Prouty for being so conscientious. Yeah. I'm thanking him right now with, with the uh, lucky shillelagh salute. But the point is that Romney doesn't get it. He's out there as well. I could have worded it differently. No, pal. I don't care how you word it. You diss those people. Yeah, half of the United States, you dissed and called them lazy. When when Hillary Clinton was running in the uh, was the primaries uh, against Barack Obama, uh, what was it, uh, Des Moines, Iowa, the state of Iowa, she she disrespected, she dissed, dissed the people of Iowa, saying that it wasn't it wasn't such a terrible loss to her because Iowa is not important anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's she, not good stuff to she, do. She's, yeah, you're running. You're running <laughs> to be the Demo Democratic uh, nominee, and you and you're dissing an entire state. Yeah, right. Smart, smart. Good. But she said it, and Romney said what he said, and his his uh, jerk off uh, running mate there, what's his name, Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan, yeah. He's been in the limelight lately. The puppet, Rudy Kazuki. How do you like, do? He looks like a puppet. Yeah. He's got the rubber face. Yeah. Rubber face, right. Yeah. All right, sink our teeth into these readings, please. This might be a little applicable to Mr. James Omadonna. James Omadonna? So you mean to yours truly? Applicable? After I get over a cold or the flu, yeah. do I need to buy a new toothbrush? If I use the same one, will I catch the same illness again? Hmm, interesting. What about disinfecting it in hydrogen peroxide? Possibly. That's not a bad idea. First, you can't get the same cold or virus again, flu, flu virus again. But it doesn't hurt to disinfect your toothbrush, people, because it's a, it's a moist, damp, it, it, it's a, it's a, it, it's a room temperature, damp, moist, or wet environment, which bacteria no. and fungi, I'm a fungi, by the way, on St. Patrick's Day, and fungi like to grow. Same thing with kitchen sponges. Oh, Make sure God. you disinfect those. Oh, that's uh, the worst. Kitchen sponge. At least not anytime soon, and probably never. You'll never catch it again. During your recovery, you develop antibodies that protect you the next time you run into those viruses. Well, I do want to thank Mega Vitamin C Powder with Rose Hips. What about the vitamin A? I ran out. But also very important to the immune system. How many units when you're sick? Vitamin A. A hundred thousand for at least five days. That much, huh? That much. Wow. And when you first feel it coming on, the echinacea. Only at the beginning. Only at the beginning. Because it, it, it kind of loses its benefit after five days of, of use. Yeah. But people are so afraid of taking the proper dosage of vitamin A and vitamin D. Well, vitamin D, not so much anymore, because no, medical exactly. doctors... Now they're giving you 5,000. When you're, when you're deficient or you have... Uh, yeah, when you have a, um, a deficiency, you're getting 5,000 international units per day recommendations by medical doctors. Yeah. I know, because my sister is taking that now. And if you have an autoimmune disease, especially if you're a person of color, definitely take the... The, the very the high dose of vitamin D and vitamin A. Take them both. Take them both. And second, you can't recatch a disease from your toothbrush anyway. If you could, you never would have gotten well. Your toothbrush would have kept you sick. Well, the, the human mouth is really a filthy, like a Komodo dragon. Like a Komodo dragon. 
You know, yeah. the, the Komodo dragon, the way it hunts is it 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 break it bites its prey once, breaks the skin, it bites its prey, and it, because its saliva is so infectious, it's such a sewer that the animal, the prey, dies of infection, and then the Komodo dragons come and start eating. Okay, now a well, human they must mouth. Have good human immune system. Yeah, they must. They must. They must but, but humans have a filthy mouth, and uh, you know, I mean, it's really not a bad idea to disinfect that toothbrush. Oh no, do that anyway. Get a shot but glass. But it has nothing to do with reinfecting. Has it, nothing right? to do with the, the with what the he's cold. reading. I get, mean, you could get something else get, from the germs. People, get a shot glass. Okay, put hydrogen peroxide in it, and just let your brush stay in the shot glass overnight and then rinse it the next day. It's a good, it's not a bad proportionary, uh, you know. I mean, why throw away the brush if it's not worn out yet? Yeah. Might as well disinfect it. Yeah, because the price of toothbrushes have gone out of sight. Well, I get It's just a plain thing, I, a plain toothbrush. I, I get mine at the dollar store. And, and even a dollar's too much. I get, um, Either I never buy buy a no name. I get either the uh, the Colgate or the Aquafresh. I won't buy a no frills toothbrush because what happens is the, the bristles, bristles come out. start come out yeah. of the toothbrush, and yeah. all of a sudden you think you think you got really weird food particles all of a sudden in your mouth, and it's yeah, not. Who knows? They could be swallowing them, and they could puncture your intestines or something. The friggin' plastic bristles yeah. are in your mouth. So you do get what you, well, in this case, listen, you either get five, a package of five or seven no-name toothbrushes that fall out, or you can get one Aquafresh or Colgate. I'd rather get the one brand, brand name brand yeah. toothbrush. Bacterial infections are different, however. Oh, you can get them more than once. Aha. But not from your toothbrush. The same evidence applies, antibiotics or not. If your toothbrush could reinfect you, you'd have to use a new one every time you brush. I, I think the I think the worst culprit is when you're out and about, and if you touch an ATM machine or if you, if you touch you shake somebody's hand, and then you you know you go and you touch your face and you might wipe your mouth with your hand, you know, and you know the orifices of the Orifices? Orifus. Orif yeah, orify. Orify. <laughs> Orifices. Orifices of the body. Yeah. Gotta love those levity bells. Oh. Study that showed that the credit card is really germy. Well, you when you pay by debit. And remember the one with the, that uh, Gary Knoll did with the with the uh, with the toilet seat. Leaving the toilet seat up. You leave the toilet seat up, and before you know it, the germs are all over the bathroom. Especially when you flush. Oh, because the germs can be airborne? That's correct. They're airborne. That's correct. That's is, correct. is Gary Noll trying to say that, that uh, uh, sexual fantasies involving bodily fluids like or scat movies are not sanitary? The Japanese the bodily fluids, my friend. The Japanese like those kind of kids. Is movies. how they transfer supposed HIV, etc. Etc. The supposed HIV virus. Correct. The virus that causes AIDS. Yeah. And may I say that Bacon you and AIDS. have brought up a subject that yeah. today vanilla porn. Yeah. A couple of the big things in uh, vanilla porn today are licking the ass and uh, g going from mouth to ass, from ass to mouth, etc. etc. They, they, they call the anal licking, they call it rimming. They call it rimming. Rimming. But I didn't is, know what that meant until I looked it up. But the point is that they go, they go from anal intercourse. To, to vaginal gen genitalia, genitalia, to vaginal. Yeah. Therefore, transferring the E. coli from the rectum into the vagina, which will cause problems. 
and the other way around, of course, with the body bodily fluids, as you're saying. Yeah. These STDs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They could be found in urine and fecal matter. Yes. Well, no. Uh, uh, I'm talking. That's that's the E. coli and everything. E. But I'm talking about the transfer of uh, the sal saliva from uh, either whatever you're yeah. doing. Well, the saliva supposedly has the least amount of STDs compared to the uh, the uh, sexual bodily fluids. Yeah, but in other words, it's all transferred that way. Right. Whatever liquid you're using, you know. Right. That's how you're transferring and, these And things. you would know, because you're... You, you, oh, would, I'm an expert. You've always been, always been an expert cunning linguist. <laughs> master, a master debater in the political arena. A master debater, a cunning linguist, the Prince of Poon, and an amateur gynecologist. Oh, jeez. You see, that doctor got in, in, in trouble for being a, 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 a master gynecologist. Really? <laughs> but he was doing things, taking pictures and videos of his f finiglings. So what you're so trying to tell me is this master gynecologist was broad certified? He was board certified. Yes, he was broad. Broad certified? certified yeah. Hi -yo. Da -da 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 da 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 I'm at Johnny Carson with with the golf club. Hi -yo. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. It helps solve one of the fundamental riddles of the universe. How the Big Bang created something <laughs> out of nothing. The Big Bang. No pun intended here. No, there was a pun intended. Oh. 13.7 billion years ago. Cunning linguist. <laughs> in what could go down as one of the great Eureka moments in physics. And win somebody the Nobel Prize. Scientists said Thursday that after a half century quest, they are confident they have found a Higgs bosom. Oh. The elusive subatomic speck sometimes called the God Particle. The God Particle. The existence of the particle was theorized <laughs> in 1964 by the British physicist Peter Higgs to explain why matter has mass. Scientists believe the particle acts like molasses or snow. When other tiny basic building blocks pass through it, they stick together slow down, and form atoms. Scientists at CERN, the Geneva-based European Organization for Nuclear Research, announced in July that they had found something that looked like the Higgs boson. But they weren't certain. And they needed to go through the data and rule out the possibility it wasn't something else. This is the, the Higgs Blossom, as in flower? Blossom, B-O-S-L-N. B-O-S-O-N, Blossom. Blossom, okay. On Thursday, they said they believe they got it right. To me, it is clear that we are dealing with the Higgs Blossom. Though we still have a long way to go to know what kind of Higgs Blossom uh, it is. Excuse me. Said Joe Incandela a physicist who heads one of the two main teams at CERN, each involving about 3,000 scientists. Whether or not it was a Higgs boson had to be demonstrated by how it interacts with other particles and its quantum properties. Hmm. The data strongly indicates that it is a Higgs boson. The discovery explains what once seemed unexplainable. Good goobledy goo. And still is a bit hard for the average person to comprehend. But it means the key theory that scientists use to explain everything works, for now at least. For now, at least. Well, that is, of course, if 
if you do not wish to accept the biblical interpretation mm -hmm. of the creation. That is true. Okay. Because they will contradict one another. Correct, because in the biblical interpretation, let's say, you don't get something from nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even your Big Bang don't get something from nothing because something something caused the Big Bang. Right. There had to be something there to cause a Big Bang, something to go boom. You need. You but need. have you ever seen an explosion create anything but destruction? Well, true, there's destruction, but I mean, in order to create something, you have to have raw materials. Correct. There has to be raw materials present to convert, even if you're creating something, like when Superman used to crush the big piece of coal in his hand. To make a diamond. To make a diamond. You know, it's funny how that diamond was already cut. <laughs> when George Reeves used to squash the... the <laughs> <laughs> the piece of coal. Instead it would, of a raw diamond, it, you would, it wasn't it. in a raw. It would look like a jeweler went at it. It looked like the Hope Diamond. It was already cut and brilliant with facets and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you gotta love Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, what the hell was I saying? We were talking about cr the Big Bang theory and how you cannot just oh, create something get, from nothing. You can't say, yeah, like for instance, like God uh, created man out of the dust of the ground. <coughs> He had raw material. Raw material. And if he didn't, let's say, if he didn't have anything at the beginning of the universe, he created it. He created that which he wanted to use as a basic whatever to create. You know what I mean? That we can accept. But, hey, you know, but I've never seen an explosion ever create something. But destruction. No, we only seen destruction. You know, yeah. I just uh, I would like to uh, say hello to uh, Crystal, the uh, founder and owner, I believe, of the uh, the Facebook uh, page uh, called uh, "Too Informed to Vote Republican." She is from uh, the state of Kentucky. Kentucky. Kentucky, where Ashley Judd and 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 the old turtle evil face? the evil old turtle face. Right, Senator Mitch McConnell are from, and um, as far as Ashley Judd's concerned, like I said before, anything to the left of Mitch McConnell would be a vast improvement. Yeah, well, he's already running. Anything, but she's, but she's an, but she's still a a wealthy, narcissistic, Hollywood. Well, they all are actress. She's she's an actress. So how can an actress or an actor who is generally self-centered, wealthy, narcissistic, how can they f feel empathy and compassion for the mainstream, for the poor? Well, that's why we have the problems that we have, because the people that are elected to those positions right. are not like us. They are different. That's the problem. That's the problem. And also, one of the problems is why money is still very much involved with politics. Well, that's one of their problems, is because they have money. We don't. Or they're acquiring money from uh, lobbyists in Washington. Campaign. You know, campaign contributors, contr contributions, yes. right? Corruption. So they owe. What's it? Uh, quid, co quid pro quo. They owe they favors. Owe. They owe a favor. Yeah. You know, you I, I scratched your back. Now it's your time to scratch mine. But what happens is the uh, politicians, they do not scratch the back. They kiss the ass. They do the bodily fluid exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. lick the ass. They do the rimming. They do the rimming. Hey, you know what? <laughs> we should use that term in politics for the, for the ultimate political ass kissers of corporate America. And what the media does too, kissing corporate at rimming. They're they are rimmers. They're rimmers, baby. Rimmers. They are the ultimate rimmers. Yeah. Licking, tonguing of the anus of corporate CEOs. 
something was just born right now. Right away. You have witnessed history. You are speaking before about corporations and etc. like that, and I wanted to state the fact that Apple yeah. has over 40 point something billion dollars, that's what it be, overseas. Really? That they will not bring back uh, here. Really? For fear of being taxed. Oh. My heart their bleeds. fair share. My heart bleeds for Apple Corporation that they would have to pay their fair share in taxes. Mm -hmm. Poor things. Uh, does that mean they they will be very broke if they paid their fair share no, in taxes? No, no, no. They'd still have enough money that you and I could not spend in our lifetimes. It's incredible. It's incredible how these people these right-wingers fight tooth and nail against paying their fair share in taxes, which will not diminish their standard of living at all. Correct. But it will ours, but that's okay. It's okay. Funny how that is. The little it's guy. also funny why I keep pointing up, a, you know, it's okay, it's okay. For the little guy to... To tax the guy on unemployment, but not a rich person. Yeah, it's okay to, to ta uh, tax a, a poor schmuck uh, 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 collecting unemployment, or to or to put all the tax burden on the middle class, and um, and you know, and the poor with consumption taxes. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. It's okay for the little guy to work for a lousy minimum wage for some greedy company like Walmart, but that's okay to, for Republicans. Yeah, all of that is okay. For Republicans, it's all Christian. It's all okay. It's all capitalism. Wait, wait. Who says it's Christian? They do. That's not that's not the Bible. Oh that, that's not the God of the Bible. Wait a minute. Did we not just go through a a papacy election? Yes. Okay. Well that church has one point two billion adherents. And they do not obey the Bible. That is that church. No, they did, they so follow the, the laws of the church. Correct. And they were panicking. Mark 7, the, verses 7 through 8. You make me of no effect through your traditions. And the people waiting at the, anxiously waiting at the Vatican were panicking because they did not have a leader of the Catholic Church. They were awaiting a new pope. And they were freaking out because they didn't have a leader. What, what, what do you mean? I mean, what's wrong? They can't read the Bible themselves? They can't make their own decisions themselves in their lives? No, the, the Catholic Church always wanted to interpret the Bible for the masses. That's why they didn't like it when Gutenberg printed that Bible. And they didn't like it and at so all. And so do all these uh, people that follow and give money to these prosperity evangelists. These TV preachers oh, donate money, hand over fists to the, these phony false prophets, the, these uh, evangelists, uh, which are, they're Protestant, yeah, they're, they're probably offshoots of the Southern Baptist Church, a lot of them, you know, the evangelicals. Hey, same thing, you know, they, a, pros a prosperity preacher is not of the Bible. Joel Osteen, when he talks about how God wants you to, to become rich and get richer and richer and say nothing about anything else, that's not of the Bible. No. The Bible says be content with contentment. Be content with contentment. If you have, and of course, if you already have the riches of this world, your responsibilities are many. Yes. If you are blessed, with such uh, such fortune, you're supposed to give back and help the poor. You're supposed to you're supposed to pay God for putting you in this situation in life where you you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth or you acquired wealth. You're supposed to give back. Yeah, I wonder how it would be today in our capitalism to tithe so to speak no 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 concerning what ancient israel under god's economics was required to do that is if you and most of most of the people you know had them you you, you had your field and you you had your harvest 
and you had whatever you were growing. So it was neighbor to neighbor. Right. Well, back then, what you had to do was leave around the periphery of your fields. Peripheral, yeah. You had to leave food, harvested food, for the poor, the widows, and this was the orphans. And this is Old Testament. Old Testament. So, so the Jews should be remembering this part. And then the poor come around, and they can eat all they want, except they cannot take it away from the field. They have to eat it there? Yeah, you have to eat what you need, because for fear of, if you took it away, you might sell it otherwise, you know, somewhere else and gain money. What if you want to cook, what if you want to cook your food? You, you had to cook it there? Well, you can take what you want from the field, but you cannot take more than it is for you. In other words, you can do it for your family. In other words, but not sell it somewhere else. In other words, sell. it was it, it was supposed to be shared and rationed, very similar to Karl Marx's socialism, which means, which gives me even more fuel and more proof that the God of the Bible is not a right wing conservative. Well, of course not. Nobody nobody believes that. Or a capitalist. This is the propaganda that has been. Uh, use just like rewriting the Bible so it is conservative more friendly right it's not more friendly to conservatives the Bible as it stands because as I just said conservatives would not, <coughs> oh my god tell the conservative that he should leave uh, food uh, along the periphery of his his field for the poor and the orphans and and the widows and said come on come on he'll take it all and sell it Yes. And then he'll mock you. He'll mock you for having that. Uh, uh, he'll trot out Iron Rand. You, what, well, altruism. What are you, some kind of a nut? I heard of a uh, situation. Paul Ryan will call you a nut. I heard of a situation in Colombia, South America, where a politician took food that was donated to be allocated for poor, starving children and fed it to his livestock on his farm. Hey, that happens in Africa all the time. You they, know, it's all that stuff we send over there and it's yeah, like, come on. They confisc it goes to the military and the big boys. They confiscate all the donated, and the United States government doesn't know this? They know it. They don't, they don't say nothing? Obviously not. They, they don't threaten, don't threaten to send bombers over there? <laughs> to blow up the corrupt? Come on. Now, they only blow up things that involve oil. Okay. All right. We are going to take a break. See how that worked out in, our, in Iraq, don't you? Ten years later. Who, who, who's got the oil? We don't have it. You know? Yeah, and, and, and you know, people, young people throughout the world, and I, I was bucking heads with somebody a Peruvian in Argentina. Ooh. Young people throughout the world and the United States still think that joining the military is an honorable service to your country. It is patriotic. Not realizing the reason why you end up going to these wars anyway. It's not patriotic. When the wars are choice, chosen. Chosen. Okay? Only when you are defending your country from, uh, you know, the borders. invader. Defending his the borders. Hordes. Yeah. Or whatever. Defending his borders. But as Schmedley Butler, General Schmedley Butler said, war is a racket. Otherwise, we used, uh, uh, in history, you go back and you see in the Latin American countries, we took the Marines down there to, you know, to protect Chiquita Banana. Yeah, I mean, Not for any defense yeah. of the United States I'm, of America. I mean, oh, like for instance, the border between United States and Mexico. The, the military has more of a purpose there than in uh, Iraq or Afghanistan today. Of course. But you know. where, how are you going to make the money? For the private contractors. Ah, ah. Privatization. Get rid of all that old inventory of bullets, etc. So we can put more in there, new ones. That's right. War profiteering. Okay, we're going to take a break. It is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's 
gastronomic delight known as lunch. Dr. Uh, O'Billy. Oh, uh, uh, Dr. O'Billy, followed by Mega Supplementation, and we will be back. Well, uh, Dr. O'Billy, uh -huh. looks like you got, as a side dish, it looks like you have egg potato salad. I like egg potato salad. Only if it's real egg potato salad, if it's yellow. That means there's real yolks in it. And I don't, I'm not yoking around about that subject either. Ring the bell. I'm not yoking around. That ain't no yolk. That ain't no way on my face. No. No, you, you, when you eat that, you want to be in ecstasy. Exactly. Oh, boy. So, anyway. I, I don't really see, I don't think the snow is sticking out there. It's a noise. Sound like a, like a, like a baby or, or no, a cat. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, a seabird. Seabird? It's like a call of a, of, of a tern or a seagull. Which we do get in our area. Mallard, wild mallard ducks, Canadian geese. Pretty soon all the songbirds will be out and about by me. The, the red, red robins that go bob, bob, bobbing along. The blue jays, the cardinals. <laughs> yeah, they have that, that loud piercing, uh, that sound that they make. We got the morning doves that go, they sound like they're crying early in the morning. We have the crows, the magpies. They come in the morning. Mm -hmm. We have hawks. Jekyll and Jekyll. Crows, but we have hawk. I have hawk hawks by me mm -hmm. across the street. Well, somebody must have told them that uh, the squirrel population is quite high in our area, so they mm. came. Mm. Yeah, didn't they call it on in? Um, in the old um, Flash Gordon series, didn't they call him the Hawkman? Yeah. And Bust the Crab. Bust the Crab. Played Flash Gordon. He was a swimmer, I hear. Oh, yeah. By, by trade, like Johnny Weissmiller, right? Mm -hmm. Olympic swimmers. Yeah. Yeah, I hear, I hear that there were many great bodybuilders, uh, both male and female, who came from swimming originally. They, they built a very good foundation of muscle mass through swimming. I believe because when I, when I used to do laps back and forth in an Olympic pool of, you know, breaststroke and I had a, I had a fantastic pump. You ever go to the boys club? No. Oh, I did once. I was freezing my ass off. It wasn't a heated pool. Oh, good God. They didn't heat it. I was freezing. The last time I what ever went... What the hell? The elderly go over there, you know, for oh, that, uh, exercise in the pool yeah, and everything. They have a new f uh, fitness uh, um, um, workout for uh, a low-impact fitness workout for the elderly yeah. where they, they go in a pool and they have these, uh, these water noodles that they call them. You know, they actually have barbells and dumbbells made of foam that, yeah. you know, when you submerge them, they, and you move them back and forth, they provide resistance, which is very clever. Um, you can, you can easily make a, an underwater barbell by getting those uh, foam noodles that you see in uh, toy stores and dollar stores and just get some large cable ties and tie them together, tie a few of them together and you have yourself an underwater barbell. You can do different routines cool. with, with this apparatus. Very good for people that live in a warm climate, people that live in the tropics or the subtropics that uh, have easy and quick access to uh, in-ground pools. I mean, what better way to, to work out and cool off at the same time. 
I mean, uh, I think so. Now, now all the time, all the time we're doing the show, the cat don't want to go out. Now he does. Now that we're on the air, the cat wants to go out. Typical cat. Typical gato. Well, if he wasn't cute and looked like Sylvester or Felix, I wouldn't let him get away with it. The other one, Smokey, pisses me off. Talk about talk days. about a pushy, selfish mm. tomcat. He just comes in, goes right for the food, and then leaves. He doesn't even hang out or say hi or everybody's food. Everybody's food. He doesn't yeah. even say hi and hang out with with any of the people here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center. He just comes, eats everybody's food, and quickly leaves. It's like uh, like the episode of Seinfeld when uh, 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 Kramer gave uh, a whole bunch of leftover Chinese food to the homeless man, and he had it in, and Kramer had it in Tupperware, and he says, you going to be there for the next hour or so? So the homeless guy says, uh, yeah, where am I going to go? So Kramer comes back for his Tupperware, and the homeless guy refuses to give him back his Tupperware. He says, oh, you didn't tell me that. You just said, here, you handed me everything. You didn't tell me you wanted your Tupperware back, so he... What the hell did he do with it? Kept it. Kept it? Where are you going to keep it? The homeless guy kept the Tupperware. So what, what I'm trying to say is, sometimes, when you're, you feel that you're doing the right thing and you're being compassionate and trying to help others, sometimes the other that you're helping doesn't really appreciate when they're being helped. You know, you, ha you, you offer them the hand and they want the whole arm. Mm. You know, or let's say you give money to homeless people that turn around and buy liquor mm. or, 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 or crack or something. However, you know, people like that. When we give a gift, who knows? We lose control of it. It's his to do whatever he wants with it. In other words, from from the, from a legal standpoint, yeah. when you give a, a gift to an ingrate, regardless if the person is a is a scumbag or mm -hmm, not, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that gift, when it changes possession, it becomes the uh, the property of the giftee, not the gifter. So when you give a gift of whatever it may be, sir, a, a service, an object, food, whatever, you're taking a risk that maybe that the recipient is not going to appreciate you or uh, like what happened to me when I gave uh, some gifts to a uh, who I thought was a friend of mine that lives long distance and it was a waste of money and time and effort on my part mm -hmm. because it was, the person ended up be, being very insincere as a friend. So um, you're taking a risk. Hey, you take a risk when you get involved in a relationship. You know, everybody makes nice nice at the beginning until you get to know them and of course eventually if you if you start like living with them, mm -hmm. then then you find out the real person when you cohabitate with them. But oh, some, sometimes you find out things about them. Boy, that cohabitation stuff. Oh, uh, that cohabitation. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But I like to I like to nip problems in the bud before they fester, before they get out of control. You know, if you if 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 something's really bugging you that much. You let the other person know, you know, uh, and you watch their reaction. You know, I mean, you don't have to get bent out of shape about it. You just let them know. Like that time, oh, I, I made appointments to do talk shows. And uh, the individual did a no show, no call. No show, no call, no apology, no nothing. Z zip, zero. And I'm sitting, waiting, looking at the clock, 
waiting, looking at the clock. So, it's very uh, ill-mannered, discourteous, to not to email or telephone the individual that you have an appointment with. I wonder if that would, ha would happen when people are paid. Oh, if, if they're getting paid? Oh, you bet their life they'll show up. <laughs> <laughs> you bet their life they'll show up. You bet your life. You bet your life. That was Groucho, Groucho Marx. Or if... Uh, George Fenimore Cooper. Or let's say... The announcer. Or let's say you... Um, and the secret word is... And the secret word is... And then there was the duck that used to come down. Um, Remember duck soup? Yeah. <laughs> now, if it's a situation where the, uh, the uh, a customer, a person, uh, is required to leave a deposit mm -hmm. on a, a service or a product, now, of course, if somebody leaves the deposit, they're going to honor the service or the transaction, the business transaction, because they already lay down 30% or whatever, 50% of, of the money required. Now, if you do something for a client or a customer and you do, do not require a deposit, they can very easily stiff you just like uh, Mr. Ray of Aylwards used to tell me, he used to tell me, if I had to start this business over again, I will not make special orders for customers. Because when he, he says, you, do you know how many products are collecting dust on my shelves where wow. I, made spe I took special orders from people without a deposit and they never came in to get their product? And I am stuck with it mm -hmm. because uh, it sounds like his wholesale distributor was not too fair. In other words, if you order something and it's and it's brand new, and there's there's a no show, you should be able to send it as a retailer. You should be able to send it back to your the wholesale mm -hmm. warehouse saying no show and get credit on it. Mm -hmm. and not get stuck with it. Mm -hmm. So he learned his lesson. Always take a deposit. Because a lot of times, you know, even in the entertainment industry, people, they yes you to death. They tell you what you want to hear. They blow smoke up your ass or sunshine mm -hmm. up your ass or whatever you want to call it. And they're gung-ho about it. And you think they're on the same page as you. And then all of a sudden, they disappear. They're not on the same page as you. In other words, it's a, it's a bunch of bullshitsky, mm. is what I'm trying to say. Just making myself a little bit useful. On your it's way a, back, give me those glasses. Huh? It's a bunch of bullshitsky. You need anything? You need anything else? A napkin, a a box of tissues. I got one more. All right. All right. I'm cool. Excuse me. Happy St. Patrick's Day weekend. Happy St. Patrick's Day. It's uh, Saturday afternoon, March 16th, 2013. Now let us get back into sinking our teeth into the readings here. Picking up where we left off. Hold on, hold on. All right, go ahead. Women. Treated with radiation for breast cancer are more likely to develop heart problems later. Even with the lower doses used today. The risk comes from any amount of radiation. Starts five years after treatment and lasts for decades. But patients shouldn't panic. Radiation has improved cancer survival, and that is the top priority. The chance of suffering a radiation-induced heart problem is fairly small. For example, four to five 
of every 100 women who are 50 years old and free of heart risks will develop a major cardiac problem by age 80. And radiation would add one more case. Women can cut risk significantly by keeping weight, cholesterol, and blood pressure under control. Still, the study reveals that the potential harm from radiation runs deeper than many medical experts may have realized, especially for women who already have cardiac risk factors such as diabetes. Especially older women, postmenopausal women. And it comes amid greater awareness of overtreatment that many women are being treated for cancers that would never prove fatal, leading to trouble down the road such as heart disease. Some chemotherapy drugs are known to harm the heart muscle. But the new study shows radiation can hurt arteries, making them prone to harden and clog. Women who receive both treatments have increased risks. The study will raise the antenna about the need to do more to prevent this. It is less of a problem, but it is not going away. The artery-related problems that the study track may be just the most visible of many risks because radiation also can cause valve, rhythm, and other heart troubles. Like cancer, heart disease develops after <coughs> a number of strikes that go against, such as high cholesterol. Radiation is just another hit. Breast cancer is the most common cancer in women. There is no safe dose of radiation. I think that's Mr. Goffman who said that. Absolutely, it's radiation. It's you know, I, I mean, there's um, there's a new treatment that um, is supposed to destroy the cancer cell or the tumor and not do any uh, peripheral uh, damage to the surrounding area. Yes, what? I think it's proton treat uh, therapy. I'm not aware of it, but yeah, it's a new th the tumor. It's not the cancer. Cancer is a systemic problem. Well, you you in have the body. you have DNA damage to a cell and it's replicating at an abnormal rate. But the cancer is systemic. For instance, we have cancer every single day, wherein our immune system takes care of it mm -hmm. and destroys it, eats it up, or whatever. But it is a systemic thing, as Reich, Wilhelm Reich showed. Yes. It's not just the tumor. So in getting the tumor, does nothing for the actual problem that is systemic. Mm -hmm. That's why, oh yeah, they may shrink the tumor, they may cut out the tumor, et cetera, et cetera. But then they end up with the spread because the tumor is not the cancer, per se. So. Yeah, it's, instead of treating the, uh, the foreign body that's replicating out of control, you have to aggressively treat whatever is uh, making the cancer systemic, holistically. Yeah. You know. And that, that's why, uh, that's why uh, many use immune augmentative therapies. Yeah, immune stimulation. Because the immune system is there. But radiation and chemotherapy 
they destroy the immune system. Well, also, it has been proven that the, uh, the, the wonderful modern diet, the foods that we have today in supermarkets with all the uh, chemicals and preservatives and whatever, is a, a big contributor to autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. There was a big article about that, like uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, multiple sclerosis, lupus, so on and so on and so on. If we eat empty food, empty calories, empty nutrition. I mean, I mean, I mean, just think about how hard that is to treat. You know, your body's immune system is attacking itself. So you have foreign invaders uh, in terms of the viruses and bacteria, and then it's attacking itself, your own immune system. You know, but you know, of course you could thank all of your wonderful political leaders for being in bed with the food industry and getting paid off by the lobbyists. Same thing with the drug industry. You could thank them all for that. But people, keep on voting for the two-party system. You know, keep on believing the lies, voting for the two-party system. And you'll, you'll watch the human race and, and the planet just uh, go into uh, oblivion. Gotcha! Oh, you do? This is the cynical goal Governor Christie proposed new unemployment insurance regulation seeks to achieve by requiring claimants to register each week on a state-run internet jobs board found at jobsforjersey.com Oh, that, that, that ridiculous joke of a website? We did that back in the 70s! Well, the workforce program, uh, uh, unemployment in New Jersey always made you do that. There are right. no, there are, there Sign are... Up. What did they have, like three, three job interviews that you must go to every week or something? There are no stinking jobs! What are you supposed to do? Hold a shotgun to the employer's head and say, please, you must interview me. Uh, Governor Christie says, you must interview me. You can't force them. You have to show that you are looking, but you can't make somebody call you in on a job interview. Yeah. Well, well, here again, it's the same old, same old. Why do you have to show anything? Again, it's a matter of Oh, how dependent we are on corporations for a job, our livelihood, our survival. Compared to the it's old wrong. days, when you when you when you you produced your own food, been, and bartered oh, with the next guy for what you don't have, we oh, had. Speaking of producing your own livelihood and your own food and everything, I want to salute uh, Gary Knowles' uh, new video that he posts almost 45 minutes long, uh, titled Organic Sustainable Farming, uh, involving his farm in Florida and how he works with other local organic farms. Sustainable organic farming. I have no computer, I can't see it. It'll be waiting for you. Where? Someday. Where? Because as I said, the Gary Knoll website has been changed. And it, it, the, the homepage is uh, mere commercialism. There's no archives, there's no writings, no yeah. blogs, no this, that, and the other thing. Where are these things? I don't know. Well, he posted on Facebook. I know that, but uh, what I'm saying, yeah. where are these things that used to be in the old days that you used to go <coughs> to the, the, the site and, and look in the archives and you can read what he wrote and this, that, and the other thing, and blah, blah, blah. Whatever happened to making something simpli Protocols. simplified and user-friendly, like uh, Optimum Online, like Optimum Cable did recently. What did they do? They, uh, when you change the channel, I I information appears at the bottom in a much Info. more, much more simplified manner. How long does channel it stay? Channel guide, huh? How long does it stay? Well, if you can make it stay uh, or, or it'll disappear. It stays. What about the TV guide from the paper? Yeah, you know, they simplified paper. Yeah. Paper. What? What are you, uh, caveman? Newspaper. Newspaper. TV guide. TV guide. 
Nah, what about the little booklet? Uh, is Stevie Guy still in the guide in is right on the cable with with the elevator music. Oh God! Or whatever music they choose to bore you with. Oh Lord! You know how easy it's going to be in the future. <laughs> it's going to be like that Star Trek, the Star Trek where the guy altered the computer record. And blame the guy for killing a friend or something? Or was it Kirk that was being blamed? But the, the guy was hidden on the ship somewhere. Yeah. And they had to isolate him through his heartbeat. But in other words, the computer record was altered. Now, when there is no more black and white paper, <coughs> how easy it's going to be to alter information. You mean without source documents? Correct. And that goes into a filing cabinet? That you can feel in your hands. So if something, some catastrophe takes place and you lose all your data? Don't even have to be a catastrophe. It could be just sub substituting propaganda for the truth. Oh. Uh, like, like in the old days when they try to burn science books and textbooks? Exactly. And they, and they had a, um, um, they had like a satire of that on uh, Family Guy where the right-wing fundamentalists were holding a book-burning bonfire and they were throwing books by Stephen Hawkins and, and Einstein or whatever into, uh. the, into the fire. And uh, uh, all the great scientists, uh, all the books written by scientists and physicists were being tossed into the bonfire. Mm -hmm. So that only their truth or what they call truth can get out. It can get out. Yeah. yeah, that's the point. Anyway, Mr. Christie's regulation serves as a legislative booby trap designed to ensnare and then deprive unsuspecting citizens of our state of desperately needed benefits simply because of their lack of access to the Internet. So if you don't have a computer, how do you do that? You need a computer to, to apply for a job too. Because, well, to because apply to that jobs for New Jer jobs for no, Jersey dot com. Period. You can't. There is no more paper application. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah. There if you don't get some kind of uh, 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 walk in from a friend or something of that nature for the job, yeah, you got to get it through the computer. You know? And your resume and all the other crap. You can't say to your friend, Hey, Joe, my firm is, uh, they want a maintenance guy. Uh, you fill that bill? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, go over there and see uh, uh, Justin, the boss over there. No, nah, they ain't going to do that. Okay? It's a booby trap, man. Anyway. Chris Christie's bo unemployment benefits blue booby trap. Insufficient computer skills are simply due to unintentional oversight in failing to register with the website. The proposed regulation also signals the governor has adopted the belief that those who collect unemployment are lazy. That's a, that, the Republicans have been saying that since day one. And in his eyes, all too willing to live off the government dole unless <laughs> prodded and threatened by the state. Oh, sure. Live off the government dole. Like, the government dole even comes close to being able to pay your bills in, in, in modern-day America. Yeah, Two-thirds of their salary. Yeah. Two-thirds of, of your, your former salary when you were working. You're supposed to pay your bills with that because it's supposed to be such a huge handout according to Republicans. How about women who just love to have babies to collect more welfare? Oh, they still call them that. The, the, what is it? The, like the, having babies is an easy task. The brood sows, the, 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 the welfare queen, the have the, the, the welfare all these queen. babies, yeah. Who drives up to the unemployment uh, office with a Cadillac. With a pink Cadillac. Mr. Reagan had that fantasy. And that's what it was, a fantasy. Well, yeah, there, there wasn't, there wasn't reality. Correct. The Christie administration suggests the regulation is necessary 
to motivate the unemployed to look for a job. Motivate. Okay, so everybody gets really motivated and they go and they attempt to look every week. And what happens when there are no jobs, which there aren't? Well, there are a lot of well-educated uh, people who are in that boat who have been sent, uh, get, uh, 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 doing resume, resumes for years, a couple of years now. Absolutely. And no jobs. A couple of years, maybe I'd say, f I've heard a, a, a gentleman that had an, uh, a high paying executive job that was doing it for a few years. There you go. And had a, a, a resume much better than, than you and I. And uh, this gentleman, couldn't find a job and, and he was even applying for jobs that don't even come close to what he was doing well that's what they like and that's what is being you see so what are you getting motivated for Chris Christie Americans must learn to live on a lower standard of living like living, that's what they've got in progress. You mean like living in a tent in the woods? Possible. Oh no! Then you'll get kicked out. Then you get evicted from the You're woods. Evicted out of the woods, yes. Or a tree, Absolutely. or a tree house, or a food pantry next to the the. the How dare you, you pastor, priest, preacher, whatever? How dare you feed the poor? Oh yeah, they made it illegal to feed the poor. So how does the poor get fed? There's a song from the 80s by Barry Gibb and Barbara Streisand called Guilty. And some of the lines in there are, make it a crime to be lonely and sad. And make it a crime to be, uh, you know, out in the street, etc wonder what would happen if those things today were crimes. And, you know, if somebody was homeless, they would have to get a home. It's a call They'd have to get off the street and get a home. Not on their, not on their dime. It's called on guilty. the dime of the government or the, <coughs> the big boys or whatever. I think the big boys... And girls. I think the... Women. I think the tax burden should get shifted back to the rich, and and all the government programs should be funded by the rich, the the rich uh, taxpayers' money uh, that the rich pay. Back in the 30s, with uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Right. When the communists and socialists and everything were making big progress in America because of the situation, the Great Depression. Roosevelt called in the big boys, the big business honchos. He said, look, pals, you don't want this country to revolt and these people tear down your industries and this, that, and the other thing. I need money from you. I need to raise your taxes. Pay up and shut up. Pay up and shut up. Or we're or, doomed. Or shut up. Pay up or we're shut doomed. up. We're doomed. Well... Not everybody was happy with that, of course. Too bad. But enough were that he was able to do that. Now, of course, that's what we need again today. And it's not a matter of, like you just said, that the, the tax burden should be switched. It already was on only those with money. Originally. Originally, well, the, from the, 1913, the 16th Amendment to the United States Constitution. The, the, the last... The very last of the nice guy Republicans was probably Dwight D. Eisenhower. 1918. Right. The top marginal rate was 77%. Today they're crying at 35. They're bitching and moaning about 35% tax rate. Three times lower. On the rich. rich. The rich. And they're crying. <coughs> <coughs> we can't create jobs. Like a bunch of babies. Well, they're a bunch of unpatriotic babies. Yeah, that's exactly okay. how uh, John Boehner and, and uh, Turtle Face McConnell and all those Republicans sound. They sound like a bunch of whimpering, 
I, babies that got their their favorite toy taken away from them. You know, I taking wonder, a tantrum. I I don't think it was, but I wonder how come the sequester took away money for the tours of the White House, which only cost somewhere around seventy two thousand dollars per week or something. What the hell? What the hell it is? But the salary of the House and Senators and El Presidente were not touched in the sequester. How come? Well, hey, all those co uh, corrupt uh, uh, democracies uh, in the third world, they had to learn from somebody. The, the, this regulation embodies a view that sees people who collect unemployment as being unmotivated do nothings. It recalls the discredited Romney esque philosophy embraced by those who would label persons collecting unemployment benefits as being among those 47% of people who are dependent upon government, who believe that they are victims. Of course, they're victims. Yeah, but they don't say who they're victims of, they are victims of the rich and powerful. That's who we are victims. victims of. This is a shame. These are desperately needed benefits that often provide the only difference between a family having a home or being rendered homeless. Rather than giving the unemployed a helping hand in reducing barriers to gaining access to hard-earned unemployment insurance proceeds, the government dismissively addresses those individuals by adding regulatory obstacles. Unemployment insurance provides an essential safety net against the disastrous financial calamities that suddenly strike unemployed persons. Unemployed benefits are provided as part of a program of social insurance designed to compensate workers for part of the wage loss caused by involuntary joblessness. Benefit eligibility and amounts are related to previous contributions made by and on behalf for the worker. The maximum unemployed insurance weekly benefit in New Jersey is currently no more then six hundred and twenty-four dollars. This is very modest sum so, upon which to support a household. It's not. It's not. It's not a big, a bigger joke as as what they give you for welfare. Well, that's even worse. Yeah, what, what a lousy stick. And uh, some people claim to be getting one hundred and forty dollars a month. Especially given reports that the average monthly apartment rentals in Bergen County run from $1,230 to $3,260. The U.S. Census figures figures show the median value of an owner-occupied housing unit in Bergen County from 2007 to 2011 is $474,200. Absolutely with a medium household annual income for that period being $83,443. What are you, out of your freaking mind? This is why... Who's making that? This is why I keep on saying that Barack Obama should tell the American people when he goes public who is really causing all of this turmoil. Point the fingers at him instead of worried about you know bipartisanship and compromising. Point the fingers at the demons. Expose the demons. Well, he can only go for so far because you know Obama's a corporatist just like they are, just with a little progressive bone in his body. That's all. Man, so all yeah. these all these people forced to live in tents. I mean, I guess I guess the fat cats and the politicians don't care. Well, of course they don't care. Now you got to find out, you know, how to make them care. Well, you, people have to... We had it in the old days. People have to get behind um, uh, progressive independent candidates. Uh, the Republicans definitely have to be voted out of office. 
Well, they're making it so they, they can't be voted out with the gerrymandering. Okay? They're making their districts safe. Do you, you understand what this happened? So they want to establish a, a form of fascism, a dictatorship. The Republicans. They're cruising. Just as shown with Romney. Yeah. When they tell the truth in a campaign, they cannot be elected because their truth is against what the population believes. So to, in order for them to rule as they want to, they have to do it in some cheating way or formulation. And that's what they tried to do with the ID, the voter IDs, the closing the... Uh, shortening the hours, having the long lines, etc., in Florida and Ohio, and etc., during this last election. They can only win that way. Because their ideas are against the majority of the people. Absolutely. I mean, how can anybody who is poor, 47%, which they say were poor, but they weren't, that's working poor, that's what that included, and other, other people. I mean, he was so wrong in saying what they were that, you know, he was pathetic. But anyway, the, these people, why would they vote for Paul Ryan to take away their social security and make Medicare unsafe and Medicaid crap? Why would they do that? Yeah. They wouldn't. And they know it. Why would they, why would any citizen vote against their best interests. Correct. Which is what happens. Now Republicans do that all the time. Which is what happens when you vote for a conservative. Yeah. Well, Republicans back their best interests, which are which are laws that prevent them from paying taxes. And and also benefit their profit making and the greed with the war profiteering perpetuating unnecessary wars, you know, for, for, for money. Yeah, it all sort of goes down and yeah. back to that, doesn't it? And, you know, backing uh, Monsanto's GMOs and, uh, uh, you know, hands-off policy with companies that are contributing to the demise of the, of the environment and, and the health of, of the population. Uh, Profit before people and the planet. So Republicans are all for that because they feel that uh, it's like this banner that I found with, with a picture of a Native American saying that uh, after the last, the very last tree is cut down and the, and the very last fish is caught from the waters and, 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 and the waters all become polluted and everything, man will find out that you cannot eat money when everything collapses and everything is gone you they will mankind will find out that you cannot eat your money Republican kind. Huh? Republican kind not mankind Republican not all mankind is of that nature you mean thinking about when if I destroy my planet uh, where am I gonna get my food from yeah but they don't really think of it in that manner what they think of is, oh no, what you're saying is bad for industry. And what's bad for industry, I will not get campaign co 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 contributions oh, from them. You're, you're, you're against greed and, and, and profit and capitalism. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're anti-American. You're a socialist, a communist. You're a pinko, you're anti-American, yeah, anti you're, you're unpatriotic. Meanwhile, they're sending all the jobs to China and keeping their money overseas so that they don't have to pay taxes back here. Yeah. Okay? People are so stupid, they fall into this propaganda, they believe these lies. Far from being a drag on the economy, the unemployment insurance helps to cushion economic slumps by supplying consumer purchasing power. It also serves to preserve work skills and training by reducing pressure, at least in the short run, to accept lower level jobs. Moreover, by imposing a system of punitive insurance contributions on the part of employers 
who regularly lay off or terminate employees, unemployment insurance helps to promote a stable employment marketplace. Notwithstanding, and the Republicans hate that. They want it on stable, baby. So you will work for 30 cents an hour and be glad of it. Oh, yeah, sure. Be glad of it. You know how you, you think people curse a lot now? There'll be a lot of violence, man. There'll be a lot of rioting. That's what Mr. Roosevelt said. Scared them. Scared them enough to make them pay up. Didn't, didn't the Italians string up Mussolini in, in a public place? And his wife. And his wife, too? And well, his she wife. was guilty by association? I guess so. But when a mob gets going, baby, you know. When the torches and pitch. There's no logic. When the torches and pitchforks are out, the asses of the masses are out there with the torches and pitchforks. Notwithstanding the social and economic benefits provided by our system of unemployment insurance, New Jersey's <coughs> unemployment program is broken. New Jersey's division of unemployment insurance handles approximately 10,000 benefit claims a week. Wow, new claims? The Division's Appeals Tribunal staffs 46 appeals examiners to handle some 3,000 appeals a month. Could you imagine how many new welfare claims are, are, try, are being processed every week? <clears throat> Ever since 1996, I've been trying to get information about how well the new welfare as we know it system is working where anybody receiving a welfare stipends has to get a job when there ain't no jobs. Oh, that's How is what, that working out for you? That's what people are telling me. People are telling me, oh yeah, you have to enroll in this, uh, you know, jobs first bullshit, you know, jobs number one or whatever, whatever catchy phrase they're using to call the program. And uh, they're registered, and their 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 resumes are online, and guess what? There's no jobs. Jobs for New Jersey, jobs New Jersey, this workforce that, blah blah blah, whatever they call it, they're not out there. And they never were back in the '70s either. <clears throat> but as I say, <clears throat> you had to state that you had sought out at least three employers yeah at the time well now they they, incre they increased it it's more than three but the point is uh you know hey the the tech school commercials are still being played every night late at night and there's a reason high high demand medic the medical field medical billing and coding medical assistance high demand high demand high demand nobody's hiring the hospitals are not hiring and if they're they are they're only picking people with a lot of experience, five years and up. Yeah, they're not going to get somebody out of school. No, no, the, the entry-level people out of school, they're not hiring them. They're, they're just, they're not hiring. And, you know, uh, American healthcare system, hospitals, you know, the CEOs that run them, they're just as greedy and wicked as any other CEO in the United States. It is now common for an unemployment appeal to take six months to be heard. Wow. Throughout this time, the claimant suffers the financial hardship of receiving no benefits. Six months. This short staffing can result in especially egregious cases of hardship, such as befell a client of mine who originally filed her unemployment claim in 2010 and did not receive her appeals hearing until the summer of 2012. That's two years. Wow. Two years. Two years. Fred Zavaglia, chief of staff of the state labor department, said, such delays are clearly a due process problem, infringing upon the rights of the unemployed. Regrettably, our state government has seen it fit to repeatedly ignore pleas by the Federal Labor Department to hire more appeal examiners to handle the flood of new claims. 
It's laughable for the states to silently claim in, in the New Jersey Register's publication of the new regulation that its passage will not result in any negative social or economic impact on the unemployed of our states. <clears throat> All citizens, employed and unemployed, should voice their opposition to the governor's proposed regulation by writing to the Office of Legal Regulatory Services of the Department of Labor and Workforce Development in Trenton. Big whoop de doo as Archie Bunker used to say. <laughs> Big whoop de doo Well, should I just do a promo or do you have a short one? No, I want to get <coughs> this short one. All right, out. do the short one, okay. If you're prone to uh, kidney stones, oxalate type. Black cherry juice concentrate? Do not eat! Oh, that's, uh, no, that's, I'm sorry, that's uric acid with uh, gout, black cherry juice, uric acid with gout, yeah. Do not Caffeine, eat. alcohol, mm -hmm. sodium are dehydrating. I hear that, yes. Don't eat spinach. Really? Oxalate? Is high in oxalates, which can bind with calcium to form an insoluble salt that can be the beginning of a kidney stone. Don't get me wrong, spinach is very highly nutritious. Try kale instead. That's a good choice. Coll collards, kale uh, are excellent. Um, uh, uh, watercress, uh, Swiss chard, but kale is kale's king. Don't eat chocolate. Well, I, yeah. It's also high in oxalates. Chocolate, as in even the uh, baker's cocoa powder, the pure cocoa powder? Well, Good just... news, ladies. This is primarily troublesome to men. Yeah, well, you know, they have their problems, too. Ditto for nuts and black pepper. What do you mean? Uh, uh, the culprits? Culprits, yes. All, all nuts, like... like the ones you eat, walnuts, almonds. Well, they don't say what type of, type of nuts. They just say nuts. Oxalates. <coughs> We're talking about oxalates here. Women are more likely to develop kidney stones from the oxalates in spinach. Cranberries. While these cranberries in solid, juice, or extract form may help prevent urinary tract infections, they're loaded with oxalates. Wow. Yeah, they do prevent the E. coli bacteria from sticking to the walls of the bladder, the mucous membranes. And the biggest culprit. What? Sugar. Sugar is always the biggest culprit. A sugary diet raises urinary calcium, reduces urine volume, a double whammy a little is okay, just don't overdo it. Everything bad loves to feed on sugar. Oh. Cancer cells, bacteria, viruses, um, just love to feed on sugar. So, uh, I mean, sugar is your number one biggest culprit. And also white flour, refined carbohydrates. Which is sugar too. Which is a sugar. Anything that ends <coughs> in the letters O-S-E, O-S is a sugar. Um, I'm trying to, um, I was trying to talk this 19-year-old nincompoop into using stevia instead of sugar, but uh, for some reason she thinks mm -hmm. that sugar is from the cane and it is natural and stevia is from a, a plant, an herb, and that sugar is more natural than the stevia. I say, no, the juice of the sugar cane the whole sugarcane juice is natural, not the white sugar that comes from the cane. And stevia, I said time and time again, is from an herb. From Paraguay, used by Paraguay Indians originally, it is 100% natural and safe. But you know what? 
and a hundred times sweeter than sugar. I don't, this is why I don't like to deal with the average folk because it's like I get more logic talking to this blackthorn shillelagh than I do from a lot of these people. You know, as, Hello, as, Spock, blackthorn Spock, shillelagh? as Spock would say, illogical. Old, old man Spock, it is very illogical to try to help the general public and, and, to, and to maintain your sanity working with the general public. Because That's, you got too many people that believe too much crap. Right. They don't do their homework. They want to believe somebody else. It's easier. You know? That's true. Well, let me get a little promo get out of Get a promo in here. Real quick. See this gentleman next to me? This is a self-portrait of my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. He is, he is a fine watercolor artist. You can see the William J. Eisenman collection by going to, and this is all one word, William J. Eisenman collection dot tumblr dot com and tumblr which is t u m b uh, uh, l r tumblr dot com tumblr if you see something you like send uh dr bill dr o billy an email at newsletter censor dot see something yeah say something say something Send him an email at uh, newslettercensor dot com and if it's available you can procure one of his watercolor paintings for the very finest in Irish imports, go to XavierGifts.com and, and email Patty and ask her to you know, okay. tell her that James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 sent you. Okay. Uh, Xavier Gifts, spelled X A V I E R, Gifts. XavierGifts.com for the finest in Irish imports. I also want to salute. My good friend, Mr. Army McGuire, he now has his complete product line, and I repeat, his complete product line of traditional wooden of Persian and Indian clubs on his website, agelessstrength.com. Mm. Check it out, agelessstrength.com for the very best uh, exercise, traditional wooden exercise clubs money can buy. And the best looking too, as well as quality. If you're, if you're wondering how do you join our organization, well, the very best way to join our organization is simply to go to newslettercensor.com and get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. That's newslettercensor.com. There's nothing like Newsletter Censor. Nothing. It was founded in 1977 by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. You need newsletter censored to learn how to defeat a conservative and to learn what is really in the Bible, not what counterfeit Christian zealot right-wing fundamentalists, Republicans tell you it's in the Bible, but what is really in the Bible, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman will teach you, as well as how to defeat a conservative. You need newsletter censored. This is how you join our organization. That's newslettercensor.com. Okay. I'm done with promo. You you have uh, a short one, or you want to just leave it for next time? Leave it. For okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this week for Progressive Discussion, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. And, uh, you know, the Irish, they deserve one good solid holiday to celebrate because of all the centuries of oppression from the English. I saw one banner in the parade. It said to England, get out of Ireland. Well, they were pertaining to Northern Ireland. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the Protestants and the British have... I guess there's still friction going on. <clears throat> well... Even though the IRA has... Well, the, 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 English, the English feel that if they pulled out of Northern Ireland, then there will be a civil war against uh, Catholics and Protestants. That's what they say. That's what they say. Maybe, you know, maybe Northern Ireland is the last of the, uh, the, colon the British monarchies, colony, the, the last of the British Empire. 
Northern Ireland could be their the very last stronghold that they have and they don't want to give up on it. I have no idea what the real story is, you know, but... Uh, well, Scotland I, and Wales are not happy being part of the UK either. No, the, the, Scot, uh, the Scotland, <clears throat> the Welsh and Cornwall, you know, the, 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 uh, the county of Cornwall, the, the region of Cornwall, they have their own culture and language. Cornish. Cornish hands? Yes, yes. Wales, the Welsh, Wales, they're not too crazy about the, the English, if you, if you ask their opinion. They have their own language. Yeah, of course. Same thing with the Scots, Scotland. and uh, I think they, I think the, the British, uh, the English should get out of Ireland. I think Ireland should be uh, all one country. And uh, I support, uh, you know, the people of Ireland for wanting that because, you know, they really were very oppressed. Uh, they couldn't have their own farming. They couldn't have their own commercial fishing industry. Well, they, that, that was with all the colonial. You know, they, had a, they can only own a, a little piece of land and grow, you know, their food and they have their livestock livestock on the on a little piece of land mm. they couldn't farm mm. all the all the uh the farming had to go to the king of england from, mm. from ireland the, you know the beef industry and the, everything had to go to ireland and uh, the history of the shillelagh is that um um what the celts the uh, uh celtic warriors and um uh, they originally use the shillelagh uh, for stick fighting as a very formidable weapon. And from what I understand, originally the, the shillelaghs were made of oak. And then um, to spite, uh, Engl England destroyed all the oak trees in Ireland. So then the Irish were, were forced to use blackthorn, which is in a forest in a w a Wicklow County which is uh, uh, southeastern Ireland, and that's where they got the, the black thorn from the forest, and there's a town called Shillelagh. That's the history of the Shillelagh, and, and, uh, and so what happened was they, the British made the Shillelagh illegal. How, how do you make a wooden stick illegal is beyond me. So the Irish converted the weapon Shillelagh into a walking stick to get around the law. And uh, there, it's a martial art. Irish stick fighting is a bona fide martial art. It's very deadly. Uh, it's it's not a joke. And uh, this is this one is blackthorn. And um, but the wood, the wood has to be grown in Ireland for for this thing to be lucky. But you know, if you know how to make it, you can make it anywhere in the world. You know. But um, that's it. Uh, go to XavierGifts.com. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Don't drink too much, drive safe, and uh, I, I sure will be gorging myself. Yeah. Say so long to these people for saying. So same. long, people. <clears throat> so what, what do they call that, Aaron Gobrales? Aaron Gobrales, and uh, may, the, uh, may you be... Uh, in heaven. Uh, may you be out of hell. May you be uh, in heaven a half hour before the devil knows you're dead, something like that? Something like that, uh, you know. All right. Or what about the one that the uh, don't let the road come up to meet you? Don't let the door hit you in the ass. I like that one. Don't let the door hit you in the ass.